Hey guys, um, so uh, I thought I'd do a quick tutorial. Um, four days ago I bought myself a little DJI Spark. I have previously owned a Phantom 3 Pro, did a lot of photography and stuff like that, um, but that was a couple of years ago and I got thought, well, now's the time to get back into flying and I do miss it and I enjoy it. And um, obviously having the P3 I never had issues with, um, with distance, flying distance and that sort of stuff. Unfortunately, this DJI Spark is a, is a phenomenal little drone, uh, really, really awesome. But um, four days ago when I purchased it, I did a little bit of flying and uh, the drone wouldn't go further than about 75 or 80 meters. It would pretty much hit a wall, I'd lose video signal, um, I'd say aircraft disconnected on the Go4 app, and I was like, no, this can't be right. Um, I mean, and um, I'm flying with a, with a remote as well, so I'm not flying it off um, off my smartphone. So I mean the range should be way further than that. Um, so a little bit frustrating to be honest. Um, I went back and forth, read uh, forums, checked YouTube out. I know one of the things they say is you can go, you can change from CE to FCC mode, uh, which is pretty much by downloading a, an app, a, a fake GPS app, which kind of then pinpoints you in America, not South Africa or anywhere else in the world, and it'll automatically switch over to FCC mode. But I thought, you know what, that needs to be the last resort, absolutely last resort. So for the last four days, I've been back and forth, reading, watching, trying to figure out how am I going to get my drone to fly a little bit further than 80 meters without losing signal? Um, it, it's, it's scary and it's frustrating to say the least because you know, at 80 meters you can still see the drone. Um, they are obviously really, really small. Uh, you'll see I've taken the, the props off as well. I, I'm indoors. I'm going to start it up just now just to show you guys how to do this. And I don't want this thing flying around on its own or doing its own thing here. Uh, mistakes do happen. So safety there. Um, so yeah guys, firstly I was flying um, with, with an iOS, with an, with an iPhone 7 um, in the controller, connected via Wi-Fi. Now the first thing I did read um, and, and, and watch was that they don't really recommend that. Um, they said rather go the OTG route, get an OTG cable, um, they, it cuts out that delay and it does make a big difference. So. I, I happen to have a, a, a Sony Xperia that's been laying around, so I thought, well, great. So I'm gonna use this as my flying platform and keep my iPhone for the normal phone calls and WhatsApps and everything else. So, um, yeah, I got that OTG cable. It's a bit long, it's not really the ideal thing, but I tell you what, it makes a world of difference. So I uh, definitely recommend, if you don't have an OTG cable for whatever device you're using, go and get one. It makes a big difference in, in, in your video feed and so on. So that was number one, I tried that. People saying, oh, OTD, OTG, OTG, um, give that a bash. That made no difference at all, absolutely no difference. I, I still hit 75, 80 meters, I still hit that wall, lost video signal, aircraft disconnected. At one stage, it even did a return to home. So uh, I wasn't happy with that at all. So I went back to drawing board, went and read more, watched more videos, and one thing I did come across, obviously when flying with, uh, with a remote, your antennas. Now, obviously when you fold them out, you fold them out like that, and that's how they are. Now, I've, I've seen a lot of videos with guys flying like this, and I, you obviously don't really think anything about it. And then somewhere along the line, I read that that is wrong. They need to be like this. So that was OTG cable, no difference. Then I went and I did this, and I started flying like this. I did two test flights like this. And my range went from 80 meters to like 175 meters, just with my antennas this way. Now, obviously that makes sense because when the aircraft is wherever it is, it's got a bigger surface to receive signal. Like this, I mean, you, you, can, yeah, you can imagine, it's got almost nothing. So this is all guys from my point of view, this is what's worked for me. It might not work for you, it's worked for me. I spent four days trying to figure this out. So OTG cable was one, antennas with the other one, right. So I was like quite happy with that, I was quite impressed, but still at 175 meters, I lost signal. So I'm like, all right, it's, it's an improvement. Um, it's quite a big improvement, it's almost double the distance, more than double the distance. So I was like, all right, that was, uh, that was actually yesterday. And uh, came back home, went back to the drawing board, did some more reading, did some more watching, and then um, 
I discovered that with in the app, you can obviously, the, the, standard, the standard setting is 5.8 gigahertz, um, which is on auto. There is an option to go custom, which will change it to 2.4 gigahertz. Now I've had a few people on Facebook ask me, how do we change to 2.4 gigahertz? Um, so what I'm gonna do quickly is I'm just gonna get everything booted up, start it up here, yeah, uh, get the app open, and then I will show you guys how to change to 2.4 gigahertz and select the right channel. Now I would completed three flights this morning. Um, on, my, on my Spark, I've got my limits set to 120 meters high and 500 meters long. Um, that is more than enough for me at this stage. Um, this thing is so small, after 100 meters it disappears, you can't see it. So um, I did three flights this morning with absolutely no issues. So that's quite a big jump from 80 meters, no video signal, aircraft disconnected, return to home, to 500 meters and back um, in sport mode with absolutely no interference and no trouble. So uh, from my point of view guys, this has worked for me. I'm gonna flick over the camera quickly and just boot everything up and then I'm gonna show you guys how to change it. Righty, so we're ready to roll. I've set everything up. You can see the RC is connected there. That's connected via the OCG cable and not Wi-Fi. All right, so we hit the go fly button. All right, so weak Wi-Fi, blah, blah, blah. Off you go. Right, so the first thing that opens up, generally before you take off, is this little screen over here. So you can see selection is set on auto, channel mode 5.8 gigahertz, current channel 149. All right, guys, so to flick this over to 2.4, we need to go custom. I just scroll. There we go. All right. So it's going to give you a whole bunch of channels there. So you can see right at the bottom there, it gives you stable quality, unstable quality, and current channel. Current channel being 149. So depending on where you are, where you fly, I'm at home now, I've got Wi-Fi interference here, I've got TVs and all sorts Our of other things. Has been updated. Thank Please you for check that. It on the map. Um, all right. So, so far everything looks pretty stable. Um, okay, so to get it to 2.4, um, if, if I understand this correctly, from 1 to 13 would be 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 would be from 149 um, up to 165. That's my understanding. I could be wrong here, guys, but um, let's take the one that's got stable quality, obviously. So anything in the green with the... Uh, uh, let's go with... Uh, let's just take... So we're going to go down here. So there's all your channels. So let's take channel one. Okay, it's going to re... There you go down. Sorry, apply. Let's give it a sec. Let's see. No, come on. Okay. All right. There you can see everything has changed. So our current channel is channel one. Stable, unstable. There it shows you all. Now it's all changed now, of course. But look what's happened. We're on 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, and that's it. You just apply that. We're happy. We're still on 2.4 custom, and we can close that. And that's it. You can have a look up at the top here, right over here. 2.4 gigahertz. It gives you almost like the same sort of symbol as your Wi-Fi. Um, so when you fly, you can check that that'll drop and, and go up and down as, as, you, as you fly. Um, but like I said this morning, quite happily, out 500 meters and back on 2.4 gigahertz with my antennas in the right position with absolutely no trouble. Um, the other thing I did read is a lot of guys say, your iOS is better than Android now. I've got an Android and an iOS device. And um, yeah, I, I've been pretty happy up until this point with, the, with my Android device on these current settings. So guys, I hope that helps you guys. Um, it's taken me, like I say, four days to figure this out. But uh, after this morning's final test flight, I'm very, very happy with the results. Um, feel free to drop some questions or anything else and I'll, I'll try and assist with it. It's all been trial and error for me. But I really do hope that uh, this helps you guys out and you can get a little more distance out of your DJI Spark. Have a good one. Cheers.